The sixth floor of what used to be the Texas School Book Depository has been preserved and still looks very much as it did 50 years ago. What happened below in Dealey Plaza remains one of the most traumatic events in U.S. history. On that Friday, the last morning of his life, President John F. Kennedy greeted hundreds of people in Fort Worth. Then he and his wife Jackie flew to Dallas on Air Force One. Less than an hour later, their ride in the motorcade ended in horror and heartbreak. It, it, it appears as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something has happened in the motorcade route. Parkland Hospital has been advised to stand by for a severe gunshot wound. I was one of the journalists reporting from Dallas that day. President Kennedy was shot as he took part in a motorcade which was driving him to the Dallas trademark. We were at practice uh, in Green Bay, and there were a few fans scattered over behind the fence, and they said, President Kennedy has been shot. And I said, where was he hit? And somebody said, in the head. And I remember going, oh. In Los Angeles, defensive tackle Rosie Greer says the Rams were still at practice when they learned that Kennedy had been shot. It was just silence, and then guys started to murmur. And I walked away from the crowd. I went down the other end of the field, and I cried. I cried because the man that we laid our hopes on was shot and perhaps would not make it. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time some 38 minutes ago. As the shock and grieving in Dallas spread throughout the nation, a question began to circulate through NFL locker rooms. We were all, are we gonna play this week or, or are we not gonna play? And so I think everybody was concerned about it. Leroy Jordan played linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, who had practiced that afternoon just a few miles from the assassination. I was hoping it would be played uh, so our team could, you know, uh, heal, uh, you know, help heal the city of Dallas, and I just felt like we needed to play the game. I think John F. Kennedy would have wanted the games played. He loved sports, he loved football. I think that was the best way to honor his memory. I think Coach Lombardi felt pretty much like I felt. I don't think he wanted to play the game. He was uncomfortable about the game. He let us know that he was uncomfortable about the game. By that Friday afternoon, as police arrested Lee Harvey Oswald for the shooting, the NFL had a decision to make. It would be up to Pete Rozelle, 37 years old, and in his fourth season as NFL commissioner. He consulted with several owners and executives, including his friend Dan Rooney of the Steelers. I said, we really have to cancel the games. And he says, well, I'm going to be talking to Pierre Salinger, who was Kennedy's uh, PR guy. He said, I'm going to talk to him, he says, and let's find out what he has to say. After conferring with Press Secretary Pierre Salinger, Roselle spoke again to Rooney. He says, Pierre thinks that Jack Kennedy would like the games to be on. I think that's what we have to do. I said, well, look, I disagree with you. I says, but I'll back you. I remember Coach Lombardi bringing us all together and saying, we're going to play the damn game. They've decided that we're going to play it. Now let's get on with it. On Sunday, just 48 hours after the president's death, 14 NFL teams prepared to play their games. Detroit linebacker Wayne Walker and his teammates observed a moment of silence before the opening kickoff. Moments earlier, Walker had been inside the training room. And we're watching the television. That's uh, when they were moving Lee Harvey Oswald, and that's at the point where I'm up on the table getting my knee taped. Jack Ruby comes out of nowhere, sticks his arm out with a gun in it, and shoots Oswald. He's been shot. Hey, Oswald has been shot. It just totally blew me away. 
On that Sunday afternoon in Washington, D.C., Kennedy's casket was escorted from the White House to the Capitol building. Meanwhile, in Milwaukee, the Packers played the 49ers. I didn't care. I just wanted to get the game over with and get off the field. And uh, there was also a, a feeling uh, maybe of embarrassment or, or that you shouldn't be there. In Pittsburgh, the Steelers hosted the Bears. People were there. But I don't think too many people seemed like they were excited to be there. It was very eerie. There wasn't a whole lot of cheering. And I don't think anybody was watching it. I, I really don't. I, th I didn't think it was watched by very many people. None of the games that day were televised. Instead, CBS, the only network broadcasting the NFL, continued with its news coverage. In the 50 years since Kennedy's assassination, Pete Bozell's decision has often been criticized. Before his death in 1996, the former commissioner called it the biggest mistake of his career, saying it was driven by his conversation with Salinger. It was his recommendation, and uh, so I made the decision, but you know, in retrospect, I wish I hadn't. It caused a lot of flack, a lot of controversy, and, and I was, uh, you know, in short, embarrassed by it. I don't think he thought it over on a deeper level. I think maybe if he'd had more time, he might have come to a different decision, not realizing maybe the magnitude of, of President Kennedy.